So here we are, part 2 of our little snow vehicle series. As promised, we will be continuing from exactly where we stopped with part 1. I won't be covering in-depth intro information since we talked so much about it in part 1, so if you do not understand what's going on, you better go watch part 1. <laughs> So as mentioned 47,000 times, we will now be glitching that same already once glitched save file which we made in part 1. However, before we do this, there are again few preparation tasks you need to pass. First of all, by getting past it in the last video, we lost all our weapons so now we need to buy explosives for Franklin exactly like before. Secondly, you now need to max out Michael's stamina since glitching his save file gave him the false set of skills which he usually gets in the beginning of the game, thus his stamina is not maxed, but we will be running and swimming a lot with him in this part too. Thirdly, you should have a small tow truck and a fast car in his safe house garage, but it would help a lot if this was already prepared before part 1 since now you have no money to buy a fast car and the full data is not actually very good for what we do. So if you have nothing stored here as of now in part 2, good luck. Without any further ado, let's now replay the Pigeon Chinese Food Factory mission again. The process is all the same as in part 1. In the end, you gotta save the game at the mission pass screen and load that save file up. Wait 2 seconds, switch to either Franklin or Trevor and prologue will start. Differently from last video, we will now be doing the mission normally a bit longer. We will actually sit in together away vehicle and if we get to try Rancher XL, we now need to track down the Fieldmaster and steal it. Usually, during this process, mission music will be fading out, which means mission gets broken. However, if it doesn't happen to you, just steal the Fieldmaster and drive off the route on a snow, this will surely be failing the mission. Once the mission is broken, we now need to head on to the edge of the map again. However, we can now use the rancher to do the process much faster. Make sure you kill all the cops in the roadblock since they are shooting you and possibly ruin the task. And you can now also enjoy being able to beat the train. Once on the edge, exactly like before, you have no map to search Los Santos from, so align yourself using fences and jump off the edge. Hope that shark doesn't wanna bite and swim in straight line into the port of Los Santos. Once there, again, grab a vehicle, but now head to Michael's house to grab your fast car, which is essential to get the cargo bob in Fort Sancudo. You might wonder, why didn't we save the cargo bob on his helipad? Well, I actually did before part 1, and after glitching the save, cargo bob does not show up on Michael's and Trevor's helipad during this prologue, which is a shame, since stealing a heli from Fort makes part 2 vehicles way more annoying to get than part 1 ones.
Now, once you're possessing a fast car, head to the ocean entrance of Fort Sankudo. Breaking the door of your fast car might also be useful since it will give you a few more seconds of time later to steal the cargo ball. You might notice that if we get to Plain County, weather turns extremely foggy compared to Los Santos. This is sadly a bug with snowy weather in sandy shores. If the weather happens to be extremely foggy, just wait that time to pass. As learned from the first video, there is always a time frame when weather will not be foggy and in Plain County this happens to be rather short, from 5.30 to 10pm, however cargo bulb stops spawning from about 6pm so you have extremely small time frame to steal the helicopter. If the weather is ok, rush inside the fort and follow my lead. Cargo Bob should then spawn in front of you. If it doesn't, just take an extra circle and eventually it should. You then need to steal it very quickly before it manages to take off. This is not actually that difficult to do but there are a few things you should bear in mind. Only the first cargo bob that spawns has a cold engine startup. Any next cargo bob will already be turned on and it takes off much faster. So if you fuck up stealing the first bob you see, you actually need to head out from the fort, drive far away, sit into a completely random car and then return to fort. This will refresh whole game memory in this area and you will get a new cold cargo bob. If successful with stealing one, hardest part of prologue vehicle videos is actually passed. From there, everything is similar to part 1. You now need to follow Blue Dot and fly to North Denton. I decided to immediately pick up the rancher in this video, however, you might as well take it as a last vehicle since moving the rancher also moves the blue dot, possibly messing up your ability to navigate. Although Michael's garage can store only two vehicles, good thing about rancher is that it can actually be driven, unlike some other unjackable snowy vehicles, and taken into Los Santos customs to get it impounded. I suggest not entering the matchup before all three snow vehicles are delivered to Los Santos, since doing that might make the cargo bob vanish. Once the rancher is in Los Santos, we will now go and get the police cruiser. Police cruiser is pretty much a cakewalk, all you have to do is get it from the roadblock and deliver it to Michael's yard in Los Santos.
one sits down, go back to Northampton for the third time. And welcome to part 2 of vehicles which Cargo Bob cannot lift, featuring the Fieldmaster. Fast as fuck, boy! Exactly the same grab has to be done as in part 1 with the stockade. You will have to drag this onto the edge of the map. Then wait until clock reaches 1 pm. And fly off the edge, soon falling into ocean. Drag the Fieldmaster very carefully in the water until you reach the shore. And now, when you reach the road, you can surprisingly still steal the Fieldmaster, although it was in the water for 10,000 minutes. You can simply drive this to Michael's house, or if it's not operable for some reason, you can also lift this to Michael's house. Once everything is delivered, you no longer need the cargo bulb. Instead, you can now use the small tow truck and tow Fieldmaster and Police Cruiser into Michael's garage.
Fieldmaster is a bit tall to fit in, however, bursting off four tires of it makes it slide in smoothly. After this is done, simply go to your blue dot, also known as right shot. And modify something on it, but bear in mind that it has a unique Yankton license plate. So don't delete this feature and modify something other than the plate. Then abandon the wrencher and we are now back in the copy process of part 1, which means we need to die. We will again be spawning in hospital as Franklin completely invincible and unable to move, thus we have to get out our explosives and get one star wanted level. Cops will again eventually bust you. And once you gain movement, go and check vehicles at Michael's house, drive far away from them and enter GDA online. Get back to story mode as soon as you can and now we will be again waiting for a psychologist paper and Simon's call to regain free mode. We can now save our journey for the final time. Everything will be glitched same way as in the end of part 1, with the only difference that you cannot replay fresh meat anymore, thus getting more than 5 vehicles per save file is not possible, but luckily also not needed. All your progress from original save file will remain, if you did races then all races will still be completed, all properties you bought will still be bought, all weapons are unlocked in ammunition and all modifications will be unlocked in Los Santos Customs. You can play as either Franklin or Michael, Trevor is sadly unavailable. You can then also switch to Michael and you will get a free taxi with no roof light, however what actually interests us are the snow vehicles. You will find the rancher in impound and others at his house, though I suggest collecting money and saving all of them into interior garage. There is also one vehicle in Northampton which we did not lift and the reason why we didn't is mentioned in part 1. It's simply pointless, since it can always be obtained freely from normal story missions. However, if you want this so bad, it will always be available in the warehouse, as well as on the road somewhere driving around. However, since I suck, I killed the driver, making it be unjackable with a dead body inside. Thus I turned this emperor completely useless, since it cannot be saved like this.
Don't be as dumb as I am, guys. You can load up the director mode and have fun with all five vehicles in there. Whatever vehicles you had stored in your garage in original save will also be there in director mode. However, only those which have a free slot in your grid save since other slots are taken up by snow vehicles. So if you had a stockade and police rancher in Franklin's garage, I don't suggest putting other three vehicles there after part two, since they will delete previous snow vehicles in director mode. Or what I would personally do, you can simply not move any vehicles after part one and move all of them to garage after part two to make sure everything is safe and sound and usable for gameplay. So it was really fun recording those prologue snow vehicles. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was the intro to Peak GTA 5 special vehicle guide. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button and also make sure to click that notification bell to hear about everything related to GTA 5 special vehicles.